hi good morning everyone let's get started with our next topic for this training session which is on preparing the source system so this is one of the five key phases of an osdb migration that this is the first phase where we are preparing the source system second phase is exporting the source system database third phase is preparing the target system fourth phase is importing the database into the target system and finally the last phase is performing post migration activities okay so we are in the first phase where we are preparing the source system for migration okay so in this phase basically what we are doing is as the first step we are downloading the sap media okay so we'll get into the details of what we do in each of these activities so basically these are 13 key activities which we need to perform so first is the download sap media so basically we verify that all the required dvds for the system copy are available mainly the installation master the java dvd then secondly uh, the pending updates are taken care so basically whenever we are taking the system for the export we need to make sure that there are no pending updates in the system okay so pending updates how do we take care of it we go to the transaction called sm13 we check for pending or cancelled updates in the system and if we find that there are updates pending or cancelled in the system exist you must update them again or delete them from all the clients you can find out whether cancelled or pending update exists by checking if the VB data contain any entries or not. So that is about the pending updates. Next is about deleting the QCM table. So before the export, delete the QCM table from your system. Okay, always check that tables are consistent. No restart log or conversion processor termination must be displayed. Data of the original table is readable. And if application program for some reason are using this, then do not delete them. But as a standard practice, we delete these tables. Okay, next thing is deleting the entries from TAT GPC and TAT GPC A table just to make sure that these tables are empty before exporting the source system. Okay, next is updating the R3 load, R3 load CTL and R3 side check in the kernel folder. So basically, SAP migration process uses the above tools and we need to make sure that we have the latest version before starting the migration process r3 load as we have seen is unloads and loads about table data from and into the database r3 load control r3 ldctl is basically it unloads the ABAP dictionary structure from the database and r3 site check basically it's r3 sg chk it computes the size of ABAP tables and indexes for the target database and computes the ABAP related size for the target database. Okay, so this is about the preparation activities. So let's get into the next preparation activity, which is basically we need to make sure that we define the database parameter for session and processes. We need to make sure that we have at least about 300 processors in the system and we tune the parameter for session as well because this ex impact the export time okay next thing is increasing the table space for psap temp table okay just make sure that increasing the table space for psap temp because otherwise there will be terminations during the export process and we need to take care of them so make sure that we there is enough storage available in psap temp because R3 load exports data in the primary key order. More temporary database key space is required for sorting. Next step is performing the complete database backup. Before the complete database backup, just make sure that we are performing a complete database backup to make sure that any changes during export preparation and regular backup methods are followed. Running the program SMIGR underscore create DLL as a bad job because what this program will does is that it will create a structure of the non-standard ABAP objects mainly for the BW system this is mandatory but it has been mandated for all the system just to make sure that there is no custom or non-standard ABAP structure is missed out during the migration. 
These objects include partition of fragmented tables and bitmap indexes. Especially they are in the form tabar that is table structure dot sql and these files are generated in the folder where you specify. Okay, next is archive logs and redo logs. Basically, we should make sure that we disable the archive logs and redo log mirroring because what will happen is that during this process, uh, there will be archiving taking place and which will delay the export process. Okay, next is mounting the NFS shear with the required size for the export dump. Okay, just make sure that there is a enough space available. So instead of NFS as far as possible, try to have a local storage so that the read write is faster here. Next is checking the slash temp file system. Make sure that there is a enough space in slash temp file system and also make sure that this system file system exists. Okay get enough privilege on the system basically make sure that if it is a unix based system you should have a root level access in the source system okay now some of the database related uh, housekeeping or preparation activities okay so basically we'll make sure that sap underscore the org jobs are run so change pointer tables is taken care just run the report CDCLS and CDHDR workflow items. Okay, just run this report. Okay, and EDI tables basically it's we can get it from W11. RFC table we have this report for the RFC table. Okay, and for office related things, delete these queues. Okay, then we can delete the TB tab log as well. Okay. Then we have these couple of report we just need to review and delete them wherever necessary. Okay, basically this is just for reviewing and deleting the tables so that the unnecessary basis tables are not carried forward or migrated during this process. So just make sure that we are taking care of it. Okay, then request or generate a migration key because for migration we will require a migration key and before the export run the report is dbi underscore cluster check perform and sdbi check bcd numbers this avoids issues during the export and import because of corrupt or initial cluster records or decimal numbers okay all right this is what actually i wanted to cover in this particular training session thank you for joining so this completes the first phase basically the preparation of the source system Thanks a lot and have a nice day. Bye-bye.